he heard footsteps coming up the cellar stairs. Yep, I can definitely hear that. There are ghosts in this chapter. One comes back as a real person. Another takes revenge on her murderer. And there are other strange happenings. Let's do this. The Thing. Ted Martin and Sam Miller were good friends. They spent a lot of time together. On this particular night, they were sitting on a fence near the post office, talking about one thing and another. There was a field of turnips across the road. Suddenly, they saw something crawl out of a field and stand up. It looked like a man, but in the dark, it was hard to tell for sure. Then, it was gone. But soon it appeared again. It walked halfway across the road, then turned around and went back into the field. Then, it came out a third time and started toward them. By now, Ted and Sam were scared, and they started running. But when they finally stopped, they decided they were being foolish. They weren't sure what had scared them, so they decided to go back and get a better look. Look, sorry. Pretty soon they saw it, for it was coming to meet them. It was wearing black pants, a white shirt, and black suspenders. Sam said, I'm going to try to touch it. Then we'll know if it's real. Idiot. He walked up to it and peered into its face. It had bright, penetrating eyes sunk deep in its head. It looked like a skeleton. Ted took one look and screamed. And again, he and Sam ran. But this time, the skeleton followed them. When they got to Ted's house, they stood in the doorway and watched it. It stayed out in the road for a while, then it disappeared. A year later, Ted got sick and died. Towards the end, Sam sat up with him every night. The night Ted died, Sam said he looked just like the skeleton. A new one for the curse. Cold as clay. A farmer had a daughter for whom he cared more than anything on earth. She fell in love with a farmhand named Jim. But the farmer did not think Jim was good enough for his daughter. To keep, to keep them apart, he sent her to live with her uncle on the other side of the country. Soon after she left, Jim got sick, and he wasted away and died. Everyone said he died of a broken heart. The farmer felt so guilty about Jim's death, he could not tell his daughter what had happened. She continued to think about Jim and the life they might have had together. One night, many weeks later, there was a knock on her uncle's door. When the girl opened the door, Jim was standing there. Your father asked me to get you, he said. I came on his best horse. Is there anything wrong? She asked. I don't know, he said. She packed a few things and they left. She rode behind him, clinging to his waist. Soon, he complained of a headache. It ached something terrible, he told her. She put her hand on his forehead. Why, you are as cold as clay, she said. I hope you are not ill. And she wrapped her handkerchief around his head. I suck so badly at doing voices. <sighs> they traveled so swiftly that in a few hours, they reached the farm. The girl quickly dismounted and knocked on the door. The father was startled to see her. Didn't you send for me? she asked. No, I didn't, he said. She turned to Jim, but he was gone, and so was the horse. They went to the stable to look for them. The horse was there. It was covered with sweat and trembling with fear. But there was no sign of Jim. Terrified, her father told her the truth about Jim's death. Then he quickly went to see Jim's parents. They decided to open his grave. 
The corpse was in its coffin, but around its head, they found the girl's handkerchief. <coughs> Sorry about that. Let's continue. The white wolf. The timber wolves around French Creek had gotten out of hand. There were so many wolves, the farmers could not stop them from killing their cattle and sheep. So, the state put a bounty on them. It would pay a hunter $10 for every wolf pelt he turned in. A butcher in town named Bill Williams thought that was pretty good money. He stopped working as a butcher and started killing wolves. He was good at it. Every year he killed over 500 of them. That came to more than $5,000. It was quite a bit of money in those days. After four or five years, Bill had killed so many wolves, there were hardly any left in that area. So, he retired, and he vowed never to harm another wolf, because the wolves had made him rich. And then one day, a farmer reported that a white wolf had killed two of his sheep. He had shot at it and hit it, but the bullets didn't have any effect. Soon, that wolf was seen all over the countryside, killing and running, but nobody could stop it. One night, it came into Bill's yard and killed his pet cow. Bill forgot about his decision never to harm another wolf. He went into town the next morning and bought a young lamb for bait. He took it out into the hills and tied it to a tree. Then he backed off about 50 yards and sat down under another tree. With his gun in his lap, he waited. When Bill didn't come back, his friends started looking for him. Finally, they found the lamb. It was still tied to a tree. It was hungry, but it was alive. Then they found Bill. He was still sitting against the other tree, but he was dead. His throat had been torn open. But there was no sign of a struggle. His gun hadn't been fired, and there were no tracks in the soil around him. As for the white wolf, it was never seen again. Serves a bastard right. Wolf killer. The haunted house. One time, a preacher went to see if he could put a haunt to rest at a house in a settlement. The house had been haunted for about ten years. Several people had tried to stay there all night, but they would always get scared out by the haunt. So this preacher took his Bible and went to the house, went on in, built himself a good fire, and lit a lamp. Sat there, reading his Bible, then, just before midnight, he heard something start up the cellar the cellar stairs, walking back and forth, back and forth. Then it sounded like somebody was trying to scream and got choked off. Then there was a lot of thrashing around and struggling, and finally everything got quiet. The old preacher took up his Bible again, but before he could start reading, he heard footsteps coming up the cellar stairs. He sat watching the door to the cellar, and the footsteps kept coming closer and closer. He saw the doorknob turn, and when the door began to open, he jumped up and hollered, What do you want? The door shut back easy-like, and there wasn't a sound. The preacher was trembling a little, but he finally opened the Bible and read a while. Then he got up and laid the book on the chair, and went to mending the fire. Then the haunt started walking again, and step, 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 up the cellar stairs. The old preacher sat watching the door, saw the doorknob turn, and the door open. 
had looked like a young woman, he backed up and said, Who are you? What do you want? Hello, gorgeous. Bahant sort of swayed, like she didn't know what to do. Then, she just faded out. The old creature waited, waited, and when he didn't hear any more noises, he went over and shut the door. He was sweating and trembling all over, but he was a brave man, and he thought he'd be able to see this through. So, he turned his chair to where he could watch, and he sat down and waited. It wasn't long before he heard the haunt start up again, slowly. Step, 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 step. Closer and closer. Step, step. And it was right up a door. The preacher stood up and held his Bible out before him. Then the knob slowly turned, and the door opened wide. This time, the preacher spoke, quiet-like. He said, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Who are you, and what do you want? The haunt came right across the room, straight to him, and took a hold of his coat. It was a young woman, about twenty years old. Her hair was torn and tangled, and the flesh was dropping off her face, so he could see the bones and part of her teeth. She had no eyeballs, but there was a sort of blue light way back in her eye sockets, and she had no nose on her face. Then she started talking. It sounded like her voice was coming and going with the wind blowing. She said she told how her lover had killed her for her money and buried her in the cellar. She said if a preacher would dig up her bones and bury her properly, she could rest. Then she told him to take the end joint of a little finger from her left hand and to lay it in the collection plate at the next church meeting. And he would find out who had murdered her. And she said, if you come back here once more after that, you'll hear my voice at midnight and I'll tell you where my money is hid, and you can give it to the church. Bahant sobbed like she was tired, and she sunk down toward the floor and was gone. The preacher found her bones and buried them in the graveyard. The next Sunday, the preacher put the finger bone on a collection plate, and when a certain man happened to touch it, it stuck to his hand. The man jumped up and rubbed and scraped and tore at that bone trying to get it off. Then he went to screaming like he was going crazy. Well, he confessed to the murder and they took him on to jail. After the man was hung, the preacher went back to the house one midnight and the haunt's voice told him to dig under the hearth rock. For those of you who don't know, that's like the main stone of a fireplace, like the base of it, I think, somewhere on it. Don't quote me on that. He did. Shit. And he found a big sack of money, and where that haunt had held on to his coat, the print of those bony fingers was burned right into the cloth. It never did come out. Okay, this is going to be the last one for now. The Guests A young man and his wife were on a trip to visit his mother. Usually, they arrived in time for supper, but they had gotten a late start, and now it was getting dark. So, they decided to look for a place to stay overnight and go on in the morning. Just off the road, they saw a small house in the woods. Maybe they rent rooms, the wife said, so they stopped to ask. Well, at least they're not going Goldilocks on those people. That'd just be rude. 
an elderly man and woman came to the door. They didn't rent rooms, they said, but they would be glad to have him stay overnight as their guests. They had plenty of room, and they would enjoy the company. The old woman made coffee and brought out some cake, and the four of them talked for a while. Then the young couple were taken to their room. They again explained that they wanted to pay for this, but the old man said he would not accept any money. The young couple woke, got up early the next morning before their hosts had awakened. On the table near the front door, they left an envelope with some money in it for the room. Then they went on to the next town. They stopped in a restaurant and had some breakfast. When they told the owner where they had stayed, he was shocked. It can't be, he said. That house, it burnt to the ground, and the man and woman who lived there, they both died in that fire. The young couple could not believe it, so they went back to the house. Only now there was no house. All they found was a burned-out shell. They stood staring at the ruins, trying to understand what had happened. And then the woman screamed. In the rubble was a badly burned table, like the one they had seen by the front door. On the table was the envelope they had left that very same morning. Spooky. <sighs> Until next.